Hey, dude, man. Scott, dude, man, here. Discussing, dude, where's my car, dude, man? Starring Ashton Kutcher, dude, man. Sean William Scott, dude, man. Marla Sokolov, girly. And Jennifer Garner, girly. Directed by Danny Leaner, dude, man. And I have seen this movie many times, and well, it still remain as it was when I was like a teenager, I think, when I last saw this movie. Let's get into it. Let's find out. We go through opening credits by saying this is based on actual events, which I don't believe, by the way. Be and before I get, because that doesn't seem too ris realistic, but before I get to, into more of this review, I'm quoting Leo from that 70s show, which is something Ashton Kutcher was also on. But we'll see if it's better than that 70s show. Let's figure this out. We begin with two stoners named Jesse, played by Ashton Kutcher, and Je Chester, played by Sean William Scott from American Pie, waking up for the day, watching Animal Planet on the TV, and can't remember what they did the night before while their roommate Gina urinates on a plant like it was the toilet, which felt like Freddy Got Fingered humor, which was disgusting. And now, to be fair, I've never seen Freddy Got Fingered, but I've heard some stories about it. And they eat a bunch of pudding wearing army helmets and playing thumb wars in their underwear as the twins Wanda, played by Jennifer Garner, and Wilma, played by Marla Sokoloff, calling them and reminding them of their anniversary and thanks for trashing their house, which is on the very day this movie takes place. And takes place on, uh, yeah, anyways. And they bring up the special treats as they believe it is a code for sex since they went out with them for a year until their boss at work named Mr. Pizza Coley comes by and says 30 pizzas were never delivered the night before and yells at them and after he leaves Jesse and Chester try to go to the twins place and can't find their car as they ask the title of the movie dude where's my car or dude man where's my car as I call it and they start walking to a friend's house and this friend Nelson and they get ran over a couple of times, one by an elderly lady as well as a family of... And they get to Nelson's place to remind him where their car is at. And while at the house, Nelson's dog named Jackal is a stoner himself, which is all stupid humor. But I'm kind of alright with it, as it's stupid. But at the same time, it, it's kind of making me laugh. And these characters are idiots for sure. Jesse, Chester, and Nelson go, get to a drive through Chinese restaurant, and the lady's saying, and then, nonstop to the point Jesse breaks the order microphone, and the next thing you know, they get kicked out of Nelson's car and bumped into a hot woman named Christy Boner, and I swear that's her, that's her name. I'm not making that up, as she says hello to them, and they ask where the car is at and tries to refresh their memories by kissing her and touching her hoo-hoos. That's what they call them in the movie. Until Charlie O'Connell's character Tommy, a.k.a. her boyfriend, comes in and puts them in trash cans and say if they ever touch her again, stoner bashing time together, that kind of thing. And they think of where the car is at and find a place called the Kitty Cat Club, which is where they went the night before, and see Tanya, who's a gender-challenged male, that offers Jesse a lap dance until Tanya reveals himself as a dude man and they leave the place, and those scenes are miserable, and the acting in this is pretty bad in this movie, as is inappropriate for damn sure, but I'm liking it better than any of the R-rated BS that's been going on as of the last, for the last 10, 15 years. But the first 10 minutes of it worked so much more than these scenes. Jesse and Chester go to the twins' house and help them take out the trash and mix the mess even worse, and they throw Jesse and Chester out of the house as well as their shoes and get kidnapped by some space nerds led by a guy named Zoltan and tell them about the Continuum Transfunctioner and tell them to trust no one except for them. While well, hell, I can't trust these guys either. While well, they get dropped off and a man in a suit shop makes Jesse and Chester try on some suits and go back and forth nonstop by seeing each other's tattoos by saying, dude, what does mine say? Sweet, that kind of thing. And go back and forth, and that was getting on my nerves as they they brought some stuff like a toy with colors. You know the ones where you have to connect all the colors on one side? I don't know what it's called, but that's a square. 
and they buy cell phones and another car as well as a bunch of other stuff and drive next to a couple and that sh they show what it's like to be gay. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but this isn't as miserable as any bad movie in my opinion. But so far I'm liking this movie as it's kind of a good time, but not a great time. But there's one little issue I should bring up. If they have a car, what happened to their other car that they were looking for for this whole movie? Let's let's see if we can discuss that a little further. I'm not sure. Jesse and Chester get approached by some hot chicks looking for the Continuum Transfunctioner, and I swear that's what they're called. I'm not making any of this up. Like the Zoltan nerds and giving them a pleasure until Ch Tanya grabs up, comes up to grab their money, and the cops come by and take Jesse and Chester to the interrogation room. The cops do, and are asked what did they do between the hours of midnight and 2 a.m. And torture a mannequin until a nice cop comes in and recognizes them as the donut guys. Sounds familiar. It makes me think of Sonic the Hedgehog 20 years later. Which was clever. It says they met in between midnight and 2 a.m. And they found the car and they were originally driving. But it was impounded to a place. And the problem is, how is, how is it that they have two cars? Then, then why are they looking for one after their girlfriend's gifts? Other than the girlfriend's guess, as the hot chicks approach Tommy to find Jesse and Chester, after Christy leaves the table and leave, and Tommy leads the hot chicks to Wanda and Wilma, who are at the Special Olympics as some of them are blind, I noticed. And Wanda and Wilma meet the hot chicks and say to them they don't know where they are and they don't care. And I don't care for this humor either, as this is kind of stupid. But there were times it made me laugh. I, I don't know how that can make sense, because it doesn't, but I'm having a laugh. Jesse and Chester call Nelson to believe he's home and he's been captured by Tommy and his buddies. And he asks about the Continuum Change Functioner is at, while two look-alike guys that look like an alien or something, I forget what they are, ask about it. And they say, screw the universe. And Wanda and Wilma dump Jesse and Chester by coming to their house because of the things that are happening throughout the last couple of days. And go to the impound and to get the car back. And the performances by each and every single actor are terrible. While the impound gives the car out, in, out as an auction. And they try to find the address to where the car is. At, while the lady asks her supervisor if she can give them the address. And Chester gra tries to grab that piece of paper and almost gets his pinky cut off. And as Chester freaks out, <laughs> that made me laugh so stinking hard. It was hysterical. I, I do that sometimes. I'm not even going to lie. I I would scream like the way he would. And lead the two lookalike guys to the Chinese restaurant drive through to get the Continuum Transfunctioner as they get captured by Zol the Zoltan people who are wearing bubble wraps as spacesuits. And they take them to their secret place in a barn and do I care for any of this? Absolutely not, but it's still funny. They meet Zoltan while in a meeting about going to space in their bubble wrap suits while poking at them, which was making me laugh also, while they capture Wanda and Wilma to trade for the Continuum Transfunctioner later in the movie. And they move on to the address where the car is, gets encountered by some ostriches while Jesse calls them llamas, which amusing. And hide in a car and get knocked out and wake up next to a prisoner named Mark, played by an uncredited role by Andy Dick, who I'm not the biggest fan of in general. And the jailer, who's a Frenchman named Pierre, played by an also an uncredited role by Star Trek's Brent Spiner, who's both very unrecognizable in their roles, which were amaz amusing cameos, but there were times I cracked up at the point at this point, but I still don't, doesn't make me like the movie too much because there were times the movie was conveniently letting them out of situations. Like, that's not, that's not fair. Jesse and Chester pop up on an arcade gaming place for birthday parties called Captain Stew's and they get to their lockers and grab Tanya's money along with her boyfriend and find Captain Stew's tickets and a clever straw and certificates of learning the language of Japanese. And they use their Captain Stu tickets for a toy that are, they're led to believe is the Continuum Transfunctioner, which is what the toy is disguised as. But come on, does anybody know what that looks like? Because they never, it never was explained. And, get, and they give it to the Zoltan people. 
and they release Wanda, Wilma, and Nelson, and the hot chicks appear, as well as the two lookalike guys, and they say that it's not the continuing transfunction. Oh, yeah, and I forgot. Tommy and Christy and their buddies are there. And Pizza Coley appears out of the blue, and the colored toy is the Continuum Transfunctioner. You turn into a space ball or something? I couldn't tell you what that is. It's a dilemma who wants to destroy the universe versus save the universe between look the lookalike guys and the hot chicks, and asking both of them about the 18th round in the miniature golf. As they two lookalike guys answer, they got the hole in one, and they learn they're telling the truth by the pudding because of the pudding, which doesn't make much sense. It's too convenient. The hot ticks turn into one super hot giant alien and eats Tommy and Christy, happening to be there, happens to be there, and she doesn't give a crap whether Tommy gets eat, swallowed up or not. While the super hot giant alien goes after Jesse and Chester and get to the final hole in the miniature golf area, and save the universe by pushing the activate button by the straw because of something Chester saw on an animal planet. And they save the universe, and the giant alien explodes, and Tommy is dumped by Christy for Nelson, I'll say. And the two lookalike guys invite Zoltan and his people to space, and they knock out Jesse, Chester, and Wanda, and Wilma, and they wake up the next day and find the car behind the mail truck. It gives the twins their gifts, and they give Jesse and Chester hats with their names on it and a space toy that makes Wanda and Wilma's hoo-hoos grow even bigger and than they were go and going to the Chinese restaurant and credits roll to bloopers they were kind of that were kind of amusing. But the climax felt too convenient for an eighty four minute movie at, and is it a bad time at the movies? I'll explain in a rating. I'll give this movie a four point nine out of ten. The first 10 minutes worked for me as far as the stoner humor goes, but unfortunately, this just isn't funny like it was as a, when I was a teenager, and that's the same problem I had with Kung Pao Enter the Fist, as this isn't as miserable as that god-awful film is, and the performances are terrible for damn sure. I didn't really care for the movie as the plot and the humor was absolutely stupid, but there were a couple of times it made me laugh, like the pinky scene, for example, as that cracked me up. Despite this isn't a great time, but it's a good time, as there were times I cracked up, as some of the jokes made me laugh, while some of them, some of the stuff in here felt convenient. I do like the unexpected cameos from Ben, from Star Trek The Next Generation's Brent Spiner and Andy Dick, despite I'm not an Andy Dick fan, but it was clever, as most of the humor worked for some of it didn't, and it pains me that part of the reason it's I'm not recommending this movie to anyone except for the stoners as this is their humor like Harold and Kumar which I'll have to get to at some point but some of the stuff that was happening happened for by for convenience sakes as this is an 84 minute movie so it's a weak mild non recommendation but at the end of the day it's a breezy time as I'll probably watch this on a streaming more than on blu-ray just to get some laughs out of it Despite I don't care as it's stupid humor. And I don't mind that sometimes, but not always. But sometimes. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me for this review. And until then, it's time to go shibby eyes. Shibby!